Welcome back for another video on Ark Survival Ascended. Today we're going through the top 10 best creatures to tame on the island map. Let's get straight into it. Coming in at number 10, we have the Mammoth. Personally, one of my favorite creatures in the game. Found in the colder areas of the island, they are a powerful creature with high health, high damage, and high weight, and has been my go-to wood gatherer for many years. Wood can be gathered effectively with their stomp attack and thatch and berries with their tusk swipe attack. With a massive 75% weight reduction for wood in its inventory, they can also grab small creatures and players with their trunk and launch them into the air like a catapult. The Mammoth is also equipped with two valuable abilities at its disposal. The Mammoth can perform a trunk bellow that applies the Intimidate debuff. Any affected targets will have their attack damage reduced. The Mammoth is also equipped with a passenger seat and a set of war drums, where the passenger can play these drums, banging out a tune and initiating a mini game, where you'll have to match your beats to keep the buff going. Playing the drums gives any affected allies the ready for war buff. This increases stamina regeneration and gives gives immunity to the fear or debuff from the Uteranus. Coming in at number 9 is the Basilosaurus. With Coropods now being gone and me having a fear of the ocean, the Basilosaurus becomes an even more valuable asset when exploring the ocean. They will keep you safe from almost any danger. With an extremely high health stat and a decent damage stat, they can hold their own against the biggest baddest threats that the ocean has to offer. The Basilosaurus is immune to the Jellyfish Stun and Dismount, the Electrophorus Shock Attack, and the Tusa Tufus grapple attack, and when at the ocean surface, can rapidly regenerate their health. And if that wasn't already enough reasons why they keep you safe in the ocean, they will also keep your player nice and warm when riding them, massively boosting your insulation stats. They do take health damage when below a certain depth, but it is rather minimal, especially considering how much health they have. In at number 8, we have the Otter. In my opinion, the best shoulder pet you can tame. The Otter provides a stacking insulating effect to nearby survivors, granting approximately 82 hypothermic insulation and 38 hyperthermic insulation. This can be improved by leveling the Otter's melee damage stat. They will keep you extra warm in those super cold places. You can wear them around your neck like a scarf, and if you have enough of them, you can even incubate fertilized eggs. And just like other shoulder pets, anything you put inside their inventory will give those items 50% weight reduction when perched on your shoulder. It will help you carry more items while exploring. And finally, they have the ability to carry more than one of the same artifacts in their own inventory. They are the only creature in the game that can do this, which can save you multiple trips in retrieving artifacts. In at number 7, we have the Baryonyx, an extremely versatile mount. It isn't the strongest dino by any means, however it does have a lot of utility going its way, making it a go-to tame for many occasions. With its speed, agility, ability to jump, and having a slim build for a dinosaur makes it the perfect companion to ride into battle when exploring the island caves. You can wield your weapons while riding, enabling you to take out threats from afar. They are also the perfect land mount to open the door for ocean exploration, as they do not possess an oxygen stat, and are equipped with a deadly tail stun attack, which can stun a wide variety of creatures. This includes being able to stun alpha megalodons, making them an easy kill. It can also be used when taming a basilosaurus, where you can stun the mantis guard the basilosaurus making taming one much easier. Coming in at number 6 we have the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the dinosaur everybody wants to tame, and for good reason. With a high health pool and a high damage stat, there are few that rival the T-Rex's power, which is why, to this day, they are the most commonly picked boss fight dino in the game. In at number 5 is the Phylacolio. They will find you in the redwoods. You won't even know what's hit you until you're snuggled up in its grasp and it's eating your face off. They are the tree huggers of the redwoods waiting that perfect time to pounce, an unsuspecting victim. With strong stats across the board, an extremely versatile mount when exploring, being able to jump and scale vertical walls, maybe even pouncing on an unsuspecting enemy, giving them a jump scare like they'd never experienced before. Just like this unfortunate Kano that was that scared, he expanded into a hot air balloon. And although they are medium sized predators, they are not to be underestimated. It isn't their stats that make them shine, it is their ability to bleed out their target's health. This is is known as the Nash status effect, and the Phylas is one of the strongest in the game. It is a bleeding effect that drains up to 5% of the victim's health over 5 seconds, which cannot be negated by armor. This makes the Phyla able to easily take down creatures 20 times its size, being able to outmaneuver larger targets with ease. The Titanosaur is a great example of this, going in for cheeky bites here and there as you please. Adding on to this, you can wield your weapons while riding. Once you've got your target's health low enough with the Phyla's bleed, 
speed, you can finish them off yourself or with a tame creature to net you or them a serious amount of XP. In at number 4 is the big bad flying bug, the Rhinian Affa. And I'm probably going to get some hate for sticking them all the way up here at number 4. But this is most likely down to my preferred playstyle. Most of the time I'm starting a new playthrough before I even get around to taming one. Taming one is easier said than done. And if you know how to tame a reaper in ASE, then you're on the right track. But this method relies on impregnating your beloved tame creatures. Firstly, you will have to kill a male Rhinian Naffa for their pheromone. Once you've done that, you're ready to find yourself a wild female Rhinian Naffa. Start shooting it and dwindle its health down to below 10%. Force feed the pheromone to your creature that you want to be impregnated. Soon after, the Rhinian Naffa will perform an animation and impregnate your creature. During the pregnancy, you will have to perform cares just like any other baby creatures, meeting the ridiculous demands that the creature craves, which is a smorgasbord of consumable items and rare resources. This baby will pretty much crave anything. The more cravings you can meet, the better the baby stats will be. Once your creature is ready to pop, the Rhinian Affa baby will break out of its ribcage, instantly killing your creature, where you can claim your baby Rhinian Affa as a juvenile 30% matured baby and can begin feeding it raw meat just like any other carnivore. The breeding of these creatures is extensively complicated, but don't you worry, my mate Rasklark has got the best in-depth guide you could possibly need over on his YouTube channel, so I recommend going to check that one out. Once you do manage to tame one, they are an extremely versatile mount. With high stats across the board, its speed and agility in the air is almost unmatched. It has the ability to walk on water and can even dive into the deep ocean. It is the only flyer that can do this. It does, however, have an oxygen stat. It is equipped with a scream ability. This can temporarily scare dinosaurs up to the size of a Uteranus or a T-Rex. It is equipped with a two-seater saddle, with both players able to wield their weapons while riding. Once you place sap in its inventory, it will produce resin over time. Resin is a key ingredient for the Rhinian Naffa to be able to use its offensive abilities. One being resin armor, which will half incoming damage, which will cost one resin every 30 seconds. It is equipped with free range attacks, a needle attack which fires a resin needle, dealing 75 damage per needle. This attack costs one resin per shot. The rocket attack, this can either be fired manually or as a homing rocket, locking onto the target. The rocket fires a slower resin ball, then flicks the target with a resin debuff. This attack costs free resin per shot. And the sticky bomb fires a heavy projectile that leaves a pool of resin on the ground and builds stacks of resin debuff on creatures that contact it. This attack costs five resin per shot. It can carry a wide variety of creatures, including anything up to the size of a T-Rex, Diptodocus, or a Parasaur, and can also pick up varieties of structures and move them around your base. This includes vaults full of hundreds of slots of gear. The weight of the items inside the structures is ignored by the Rhinian Naffa. It will need resin in its inventory to be able to do this. In at number three is the Ferrazinosaurus. If you're looking for a dinosaur to tame that can do anything and everything, the Ferrazino is for you. Equipped with three different attacks, its bite attack for gathering berries, hide, and numerous other collectibles. Its power attack, aka the slap attack, great for harvesting wood, raw meat, and a bunch of other collectibles. And its delicate attack, aka the tickle attack, great for harvesting fiber and a wide variety of other collectibles. That's right, the fairy, it can do it all. Minus slap rocks, of course. They are also equipped with their own unique harvesting levels. With every additional level the fairy gains, they also gain a harvesting level. You can either put them into power harvesting or delicate harvesting, which will boost the Ferrazino's harvesting efficiency in your desired field. I'd recommend only leveling up one harvesting stat per Ferrazino. For example, if you have one in power harvest, have a different Ferrazino in a delicate harvest, so you can use them for different purposes. The Ferrazino isn't just a farming machine. It is also an extremely powerful battle mount with high health and high damage, comparable and rivaling that of a T-Rex. Being as they are a herbivore, they have access to the sweet veggie cakes, which makes the Ferrazino a formidable boss fighter in most arenas. Missing out on the top spot is going to be the Uteranus, the most valuable support dinosaur in the game, boasting two unique raw abilities, the Intimidation Fear Roar. This will terrify enemy creatures even when mounted by a player. Any affected creatures will receive a debuff, increasing damage taken and reducing damage dealt by up to 50%. When at full fear, the terrified creature will flee and not respond to any commands. This roar can be utilized when taming any creatures affected by the debuff, as they will take more torpor damage from tranquilizing weapons. It can also be used to scare out berry pelovias. The second roar is the Courage Roar. This will temporarily boost the attack damage of allied creatures by 25% and reduces all incoming damage 
they take by 20%. Extremely useful in large scale battles and makes them the most valuable asset in any boss fight arena. Adding to this, you can use this raw on wild carnos to temporarily have them fight for you. I can't say I've ever used this before, but that's just me. Taking the number one spot is none other than the Argentavis. The Argentavis is a jack of all trades and probably one of the most valuable creatures in the entire game due to their expansive versatility. Even a low level Argentavis can serve numerous purposes. For the most part, they are used for transport with their high weight stat and stamina stat. Its saddle can also be used as a portable smithy. Being able to craft or repair your items on the go while out exploring can be invaluable. Adding to this, it gives massive weight reduction for a wide variety of heavy resources, meaning you can craft some of your ridiculously expensive blueprints that you could never craft in your smithy or a beaver due to them not having enough slots or enough weight to carry the heavy resources. The Argentavis also makes for a very strong battle mount with high damage output, great maneuverability with a strong buff under its sleeve at its disposal, known as rapid regeneration. This buff recovers both health and stamina even in flight. This effect occurs when the Argentavis bites or consumes a corpse and will last for 20 seconds. This makes the Argentavis great for prolonged battles, but their utility does not end there. It can pick up small to medium creatures in its talons, which paired with the Dodicarus or the Ankylosaurus makes for the perfect farming team. They can also carry small creatures in their mouth, therefore being able to carry two creatures at the same time. And once they land, they will still keep the smaller creature in their mouth, keeping them safe and sound. And that is also going to be the end of the video for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and hope it was helpful to you all. And if it was, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really helps me out. These videos do take a long time to make. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.